It's September and this is the Library Road Show. On the show today, arts, business, and authors. Welcome to the September edition of the Library Road Show. I'm Mary Stein and this is a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Each fall for more than four decades, we've welcomed a writer or artist of children's literature to join us for our annual Author Illustrator Program. This October 3rd and 4th, we'll host Newbery Award winning author Matt De La Pena at the Main Library at Goodwood. Many of Matt's books are for teen writers, books like We Were Here, Mexican White Boy, and Ball Don't Lie. But he's also written picture books for younger kids. Matt's book, Last Stop on Market Street, not only won the Newbery Medal, but was a Caldecott honor book, a Coretta Scott King Illustrator honor book, and was a number one New York Times bestseller. Matt will present a program for all ages on Thursday, October 3rd, beginning at 7 p.m. This free program will take young readers behind the writing. Books will be available for purchase and autographing. Then on Friday, October 4th, Matt will present a special ticketed workshop for teachers, librarians, and anyone interested in literature for young adults. For more information and to register for this special workshop, visit ebrpl.com or call Children's Services at 225-231-3760. Now as we move past Labor Day, i like to freshly remind you that the library is filled with books and electronic resources to help your kids get back into the groove of the school year. If you're in the library, staff are more than happy to direct your young scholar to the right resources for his specific project or suggest reading material that not only fits his assignment and grade level, but it's also interesting and engaging to read. And beyond that, the digital library is always open. Homework Louisiana offers free online tutoring through tutor.com in every subject, grades K through 12 and even into college. This service is available Sunday through Thursday from 2 p.m. till midnight. Moms and dads, especially if math was a long time ago, this database is for you. And did you catch the part where I said it was free? Plus, we've got Learning Express, Opposing Viewpoints, Gail's Interactive Science, Statista, Scholastic Flicks, AbdoZoon, EBSCO Journals, all the literary criticism you could ever need or want, and so much more. Reliable information at your fingertips. All you need is that East Baton Rouge Parish Library card. Free access to books, audio, and library resources are just a few of the benefits available to you when you get a library card. Need free access to a computer? You get that. Want free access to premium digital resources like Mango Languages and Lynda.com? You get that. Need to book a meeting space? You get that. Heck, you can even check out a telescope or use a digital printer with your library card. If you live in East Baton Rouge Parish, pick up your free library card from your local branch library today. Premium access to everything the library system has to offer is waiting for you. Even though September seems to be all about back to school, we haven't forgotten our adult patrons. To round out the fabulous business resources we already offer through Gail's Business Suite, we've just added the final tool for the entrepreneurial tool belt, Demographics Now. Adam St. Pierre joins us to explain in the digital download. Are you a small business owner or thinking about starting a small business? Do you need more information on prospective customers, market analysis, and your competitors? Then you have to check out the library's newest small business tool in Demographics Now. Demographics Now can help you choose a business location, research your competitors, determine your market size, build direct marketing lists, profile current and potential customers, uncover consumer buying patterns or forecast trends and all of these are canned reports that you can do with any business type sound a little overwhelming good thing there are video tutorials for mapping market risk and anything you'd want and it's all free with just your library card to check out demographics now head over to the digital library page at ebrpl.com 
Thanks, Adam. This new database works seamlessly with the other Gale business products, so you can move from the business plan builder to market research to everything in the interactive module for entrepreneurs and small business owners. And don't forget, business librarians are standing by to help. They can steer you in the right direction to use these and the many other robust tools available at the library that deliver business intelligence and help you with strategic planning. To set up your private consultation, simply contact them at smallbusiness at ebrpl.com or call 225-231-3750. It's a free service. Let's shift gears and check in with Kayla Perkins reporting in from Beyond the Stacks. Your library celebrates art and art history in a variety of ways. We're at the main library for a discussion with Executive Director of Baton Rouge Gallery, Jay Andreessen. Let's check it out. Um, but it's a pleasure to be with you and speak a little bit about uh, the gallery, its history, where we are today, where we hope to go, um, and kind of what sets the gallery apart, not only locally, but kind of in a national context as well. Jay Andreessen is the Executive Director of the Baton Rouge Gallery. His lecture attracted artists and art lovers from across the area. They came to hear what Jay had to say about art and to learn about the history of the Baton Rouge Gallery. The gallery has been a part of the cultural landscape of this city for more than 50 years. It is one of America's oldest artist cooperative organizations, which is a really unique feature. Um, it gives the public an opportunity to see what quality local contemporary art is, not from a curator or a single owner's viewpoint, but from the artists themselves. So that's something that I'm uh, really hoping people can take away from tonight's talk. Today there are over 60 artist members. They work in a wide array of media, color palettes, subject matter, you name it, uh, most of which live in the Baton Rouge area, even more live outside of Baton Rouge but inside the state of Louisiana, and then we have some that live outside of Louisiana who maybe grew up here, were born here, <coughs> lived here for a time and then moved away, but they still have an audience here, they still have a following, we still want to share their work with uh, the Baton Rouge community. So the first day that the Baton Rouge Gallery opened its doors, it wasn't called Baton Rouge Gallery, it was actually called Una 8 Gallery. In 1965 there were eight artists who were uh, on faculty at LSU or graduating from LSU and they realized that if they wanted anybody in this area to see their work they were going to have to start their own venue. At the time the galleries were showing Audubon prints and uh, traditional landscapes, things like that. And so they knew they had to start their own venue, and the only venue that was accessible to them at the time was an old doctor's office. So the gallery kind of started out as a, you know, uh, we won't be stopped kind of a venture. Um, they were using examination rooms and waiting rooms for gallery space, and they turned it into something that could be a gallery. Um, and they bounced around different locations, and it wasn't until the mid-80s that uh, Baton Rouge Gallery moved into its current home. Um, but the fact that it started out, you know, there was just this drive to, to bring uh, contemporary art to Baton Rouge when there wasn't really uh, an opportunity for Baton Rouge residents to enjoy contemporary art. Um, and it started out in, a, in an old doctor's office on North 19th Street. My own uh, love for art certainly plays into probably every decision in some way uh, at the gallery. Um, you know, I I'm, feel very strongly about the power that art has uh, not only on an individual level, but in a, in a larger sense in terms of what it can mean for a community. Um, knowing that uh, the arts impact everything from civic engagement to, uh, believe it or not, child welfare and, and poverty rates and all of these different things. Um, and bringing the very best contemporary art possible from both Louisiana and, and local artists, but also even artists from outside of Louisiana and outside of Baton Rouge, um, at least occasionally, really helps to uh, broaden the sense of what contemporary art is for our community, what it can be, and what it can do. I bet you're just as excited as I am to find out what's in store at the Baton Rouge Gallery. But to find out what's coming up next at your library, pick up a copy of our monthly newsletter, The Source, or visit us online at www.ebrpl.com. Thanks, Kayla. The library takes very seriously its role to preserve local history, and that includes the history of our vibrant arts community. Check out the Arts and Culture Info Guide or visit the Digital Archive to see more. Stay right there. After the break, Andrew Tadman joins me for a chat right here on the Library Roadshow. 
Hi, I'm Ken Jeong from the new movie Wonder Park. In the film, a young girl finds a fantastical amusement park straight out of her childhood imagination. For a magical adventure of your own, look no further than your local library, which has books, games, and activities promoting creativity and discovery. Find something wonderful at your library. Do you wonder how your family landed here? Do you really know your family roots? Discover more about your family history at the East Baton Rouge Parish Library Genealogy Department. East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Become a member and discover more. You're watching this September edition of the Library Roadshow. Everything you need to know about your local library system. We're ramping up for the 6th Annual Baton Rouge Mini Maker Fair. Scheduled for Saturday, October 19th, right here at the Main Library at Goodwood. It sure takes a lot of people and energy to make this a reality. Committee Chairman Andrew Tadman joins me now to share all the details. Okay, Andrew, first of all, for the fans out there who don't already know, what is a Maker Fair? Okay, so it's a celebration of creative hobbies and crafting. And that covers everything from high tech like virtual reality and robotics to uh, more traditional things like jewelry making, weaving, or even beekeeping. And um, you're gonna see something amazing when you come, so we can guarantee that. And the beauty of the Maker Fair is that it's all about hands-on activities, so hopefully you'll be inspired, you've tried something new to... Um, to pick up something yourself? Yeah. Well, how has been the reaction from the previous five years? Oh, I mean, every year's been wonderful. And every year we've had a different theme. And mm -hmm. this year we're going with a fashion theme. Okay, well, I'm... <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so um, that's gonna involve, um, we're gonna have groups like the LSU Department of Textiles here. They're gonna be mm -hmm. doing a workshop on repurposing clothes. Oh, that's fascinating. I love seeing those Pinterest things where they take your dad's shirt and turn it into something amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it'll all be culminating in a really cool fashion show that we'll be having. And you'll be able to see things like wearable art, wearable okay. technology, and um, cosplay, of course, which is always popular. Right, so so wh whether your interest is on the new tech, where the clothes help you live better, smarter, whatever, or the funness of cosplay and costuming, which is something here in Louisiana, we sure like to dress up at any Absolutely. hour of the day and night, <laughs> whether it's for fall or for Mardi Gras season. So there'll be some useful things to learn at this Maker Fair, won't there? Yeah, absolutely. So when is this taking place? Uh, it's October 19th from 10 to five. Okay, and who should come? Oh, uh, really everybody. It's great for all ages. Um, we're going to have things for adults, big spectacles, and we're having aerial silk artists and acrobats. Oh, that's cool. And workshops on things like soldering. Um, we have a group, Picayune Pre, they make um, souped up little electric kids' cars that adults can drive. So oh, that's going to be hilarious. <laughs> oh, the social media is going to be fabulous, I bet. Are you going to get into one of those little oh, cars? Absolutely. Okay. So, what else is on tap? Um, we've got um, front yard bikes are going to be there. They'll be making uh, smoothies with bike power. Oh, I like that. Uh, Beyond the Garage will be there with his band of puppets. Okay, he's so, been wonderful. And he's uh, he's gotten some real good regional and even national play. Yeah, absolutely. And for the children, we've got um, building programs uh -huh. and music programs. And of course, our friends, the Knock Knock Museum will be here. Oh, it's fabulous. Yeah, they're um, doing programs based on The Wizard of Oz. Okay. So you'll see there is no place like Maker Fair. Okay, I'm going to get some red shoes. Though. I know in the past, sometimes it's been hard to get the adults out of the Knock Knock area because once the adults start playing, they just don't want to stop. Yeah, they do. And um, speaking about kids, um, quite a few of our makers are actually under 12. That's marvelous. So it just goes to show that you know, you're never too young to either come to the Maker Fair or take part in the Maker okay. Fair. Okay, now do people have to register? Um, yes, well, you don't have to register, but you can register. You should. Yeah, if you, read, if you do register, you'll have a chance to win a Cricut machine and some Joanne's Fabric gift cards. Oh, and we have a special bond with Joanne because of your Creative Bug <laughs> database, yep, so don't we? Creative Bug, they're sponsoring us. And if you're not familiar with Creative Bug, it's, um, arts and craft classes, really great courses, and mm -hmm. it's available 
whenever you want to look at it in the digital library. Yeah, all you need is your library card. Okay. Absolutely. After the break, Mary Beth Lima joins me, plus book reviews from one of our younger library patrons. All that and more coming up next on the Library Roadshow. I'm Zoe Kravitz from Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Books are magical and reading can transform your life. Libraries make sure people of all backgrounds can experience the wonder of literature through literacy programs and access to media. Spread the magic by supporting your library. Welcome back to the September edition of the Library Roadshow. My next guest is an alumni professor at LSU. Mary Beth Lima specializes in food, agriculture, and biological engineering. I first met Mary Beth through her work with college student volunteers who go out into the community and build playgrounds for local children. However, it's her hobbies that inspire her writing. Mary Beth joins me now by phone to discuss her book entitled Adventures of a Louisiana Birder. Mary Beth, when did you get your start as an author? Pretty early on. I loved writing when I was a kid, and I'd make up stories and write them in books that I created from construction paper. I'd also illustrate my stories and read them to my parents, who were both very attentive and supportive. I was encouraged by several teachers in elementary school, and I took creative writing in high school, where my teacher, Todd Evans, taught me the basics of story writing. What's your book about? Adventures of a Louisiana Birder is about two main things, birds and life. Louisiana is an amazing place to bird. We are one of the best states in the country to bird, but we are also among the most underappreciated. One of my goals in writing this book was to shine a light on Louisiana as a beautiful natural place and to tell some of the stories about the amazing birds and birders who live here. This book is full of stories throughout Louisiana from Venice to Shreveport. I believe that anyone who enjoys Louisiana and the natural world or who enjoys people and their stories will like this book. What inspired you to write this book? An innocent conversation inspired the book. In 2013, I was celebrating the publication of my first book with the LSU Press with my editor. Over lunch, Elisa said, I know from working with you on your playground book that you were a birder. I have a question for you. Do you know anyone who could write a story on white pelicans? Well, you could do a book about white pelicans, I replied. But there are a whole lot of interesting birds in addition to white pelicans that could go into a book. I proceeded to tell her some of the highlights of the close to 500 bird species in Louisiana. And when I was finished, she said, this is your book. My initial thought was no way, and I said so. But Elisa told me, just think about it. Our celebratory lunch was on a Friday. Over that weekend, I had so many brainstorms about birds and birding and birders that by Sunday night, I had three single space pages of notes. What are you working on next? I haven't jumped into a new book project just yet, but I am continuing to take notes about birds and birding and people in Louisiana. I suspect that a sequel will be in my future, though it is years away. How can our viewers learn more about you? If you read Adventures of a Louisiana Birder, you will get a strong sense of who I am and about my life in Louisiana during the last five years. I am a professor at LSU in the Department of Biological and Agricultural Engineering. And as part of my job, I direct the LSU Community Playground Project. As previously mentioned, I wrote a book about this project that contains a lot about life in Louisiana, as well as what drives me to do my part to make my community a great place to live for everyone especially children. That book is entitled, Building Playgrounds, Engaging Communities, 
Creating Safe and Happy Places for Children. I also did a TEDx LSU talk called Finding the Soul of the Community, which is available on YouTube. Finally, I am the editor of the Journal of Community Engagement and Scholarship, which is published in hard copy and online twice a year. I write an editor's column for each issue, and I tend to focus these columns around what I'm thinking about in the moment. Thanks, Mary Beth, and good luck on the next phase of your public service projects with college students. Now, at this point in the show, we like to check in with one of our younger patrons to find out what they're reading at the library. <laughs> Hi, my, my name is Connor. Uh, my favorite book is Dr. Seuss. Here we are. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Black fish, blue fish, old fish, new fish. I come to the library. I like to play the games at the library and play with the toys at the library. I, I'm, I want to listen in those earphones. Thanks, Carter. Dr. Seuss offers so many great series. The sillier the better for me, and I'm glad you're enjoying him. Stay right there. You're watching the Library Roadshow. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. I... <laughs> <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. Hey, I'm Constance Wu. Did you know that Crazy Rich Asians was a book before it became a movie? You can still find books at the library, but libraries have so much more, including educational programs for families and opportunities for community engagement and professional development. So visit your library today. My name is Emily Ward, and I'm the Digital Archivist for the Special Collections Department of East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Located on the second floor of the main library at Goodwood, where Baton Rouge history comes alive. People produce more digital personal records today than ever before. Many assume their personal records will always be accessible because they reside on a computer, on the cloud, or on the internet. This is a common misconception with serious consequences. In fact, you might be surprised to learn your paper and analog materials last much longer than your digital files, which are susceptible to conditions such as technological obsolescence, bit rot, file corruption, hardware failure, and even accidental deletion or modification. We need to commit to developing and implementing a preservation plan, and Special Collections is here to help. For those who would like an in-depth learning experience on the topic of digital archives, check out our personal digital archiving courses being offered in September and November. The course offers information on how to properly store and maintain your archive, different techniques to organize your materials and make your items easier to find when you need them, and also provides you with free tools and resources to assist you as you work on your collection on your own. Registration is limited, so make sure you call 225-231-3751 to register today. Special Collections has also expanded the availability of our professional grade scanners. Patrons can now reserve the scanners for two hour time slots to scan photographs, documents, negatives, slides, and books. Staff will be on hand to guide you through the process and consult on how to best handle and preserve your materials. We ask that patrons call 225-231-3751 to reserve a time slot. To learn more about Special Collections and how we can help you preserve your personal archives, check out the Baton Rouge Room Info Guide located at www.ebrpl.com or visit us on the second floor of the main library at Goodwood, where Baton Rouge history comes alive. You're watching the September edition of the Library Roadshow, a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. Preserving personal archives came up during our recent programs on organizing and hoarding. We all agreed that we need to do it, especially those who lost precious family memories during the historic flood of 2016, but it seemed pretty overwhelming. These fall workshops will help you develop your strategy. Plus, knowing that you can make an appointment to come and use the high-resolution scanner is terrific. 
It's all available at the Main Library on Goodwood, and it's free with your East Baton Rouge Parish Library card. If you're looking for a job and you're using online tools to find it, chances are you're being targeted by scammers. That's a trend Ann Nowak with the Library's Career Center has seen, so she's hitting the road to help patrons avoid falling prey to these job search scams. Um, my name is Anna Novak. I run the Career Center at the main library of the East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. But tonight we're here at the Eden Park Library for a seminar on online job search. Even though that is not the most um, or not the best way or most efficient way of job searching, it is still what most people do and I want to explain how to do it best and especially how to avoid scams. We have people come in every day that get these spam email and, and texts and um, unfortunately do hand over credit card information or personal information and we really want to teach people how to avoid this, how to spot those scams while they're searching for jobs online. Double check on that website if that job is really open, or you Google that company, just to see, you know what, is that a legitimate job opening? Most of our seminars do take place at Maine. We do make an effort to go out to the branches because not everybody living in their vicinities can make it to Maine. And sometimes they have different needs, so we will customize seminars for certain branches um, to reach out to all parts of our city. Anna and her team at the Career Center are a resource for job seekers. They welcome your visit, call, or email. Their services and support are free to library patrons. You can go to our website, www.careercenterbr.com, and you will find a wealth of information, links to legitimate job search sites, um, or you call us at 225-231-3733 and um, ask any question you like regarding job search and careers. Um, or make an appointment to come in and meet with one of us. Thanks, Kayla and Ann. The Career Center is a wonderful resource for patrons. Whether you're coming in person for a consultation, using their templates and resources, attending one of their free workshops throughout the library system, visiting them at a job fair or expo, or even watching them stream online. And it's all offered at no cost to you. That's careercenterbr.com. And now for today's contest, visit the library's Facebook page at facebook.com slash ebrpl. For September, I like to fall into the pages of a book, don't you? But I sure did like being reminded about the fabulous Dr. Seuss. So how about you show me how you feel about your favorite book by Dr. Seuss, whether it's the classic Cat in the Hat or Green Eggs and Ham or one of his less known titles. That's facebook.com slash ebrpl. And while you're there, enjoy. We're not your grandfather's library anymore. What's coming up on the Library Roadshow in October? Author, illustrator, Matt De La Pena, of course. Tune in next month and I'll take you all over the Maker Fair. And coming up next month, I'll share another digital resource with you. Thanks so much for joining us on the Library Roadshow. And remember, your East Baton Rouge Parish Library is open seven days a week at each and every one of 14 branches, plus 24 seven on the web. Check us out at ebrpl.com. And that's how we roll.